3.8 complex numbers. Before we start, we need to remind ourselves of some things. We already know certain square roots, like square root of 4 is 2, square root of 9 is 3, square root of 16, square root of 25, square root of 36, square root of 49, square root of 64, square root of uh, 81, square root of 100. If you don't already know those square roots, you need to learn them. Those are the perfect squares. They're perfect because they are um, going to be nice numbers. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 25. Square root of 36. Square root of 49. Square root of 64. Square root of 81. Square root of 100. Learn those. Something that's going to come up later is the square root of negative 1 we're going to define that as I. I stands for imaginary. And we're going to be able to handle square roots of negative numbers now. We couldn't do that before. Your calculator won't do it because it's not a real number. It's imaginary. But let's start with number one, square root of 50. Do not divide by 2 and get 25. We are not dividing by 2, so do not do that. What you have to do is try to figure out how to split the 50 into one of those numbers that we know the square roots and something else. So in this case, I know 50 can be written as 25 times 2. So I split it into square root of 25 times the square root of 2. That equals square root of 50. And the whole reason I do that is because I know the square root of 25. Square root of 25 is 5. I don't know the square root of 2, and that's okay. I'm going to write 5 times the square root of 2, and that's my answer. Simplify square root of 50, that's what happens. Number 3 is a little bit harder, because what almost everyone does is they split the 80 into 4 and 20. And so square root of 4 is in that list, square root of 4 is 2, and so they say 2 times the square root of 20, and they think they're right, but they're not quite right because they're not quite simplified. If you look at the 20... There's another 4 inside that 20. And so if you write it this way, you have to do more because you're not finished. You'd have to say, well, I know the square root of 20 is also going to be square root of 4 times the square root of 5. And so square root of 4 was 2, square root of 4 was 2 here as well. And so if you put everything together, you've got a 2 times another 2 times that square root of 5. The answer is going to be 4 times the square root of 5. Now, I really don't like doing it that way because there's just too much. So what you should always try to do is pick the biggest one of those perfect squares that goes into 80. So what I would have done is I would have said, okay, is there anything bigger? You know, four, uh, 4 goes in, but 20 still has a 4 in it. There's something bigger, specifically that 16. So what I would rather do is write it with that bigger number, 16. Square root of 16 times square root of 5 is also the square root of 80, but that's better because the square root of 16 is 4. I get 4 times the square root of 5. I did that problem in one step instead of two steps. It was much faster. So the moral of the story is go big. Pick the biggest perfect square number you can. Next one. Square root of negative, you can try that on your calculator, and it's, it's not going to work. It's going to give you an error because this is a non-real answer. But all we're going to do is we're going to say the square root of negative 1 is equal to i. So we're going to treat this like square root of 20 times i. We'll just call it imaginary. We're going to do the exact same thing with our 20. I know there's a 4 that goes into the 20. And the square root of 4 is equal to 2. So look at what we have. Put it all together. We've got a 2 and an i and a square root of 5. Negative 75. Well, that negative just means this is going to be an imaginary. So you can just really treat it like a square root of 75 with an I on it. We need to know what goes into that square root of 75. So go back and look at your numbers. And I know 25 goes into 75. 25 goes in three times. So I split then into square root of 25, square root of 3. I know the square root of 25 is 5. So put it all together, look at what you have. You have a 5 and an i and a square root of 3. 
square root of negative 80. Okay, well, we already did 80. Remember when we split it into 16 and 5? And we're going to have an i because of that negative. So square root of 16 is 4. We have an i, and we have a square root of 5. Simplify just means add like terms. And this should be easy for you. Add the like terms. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2i minus 5i is negative 3i. That's it. Next one, the parentheses are a little bit confusing, but the parentheses aren't really necessary other than to hold off this negative. Notice you're subtracting a 4 and you're subtracting a negative 5i. So we can just distribute and call that plus. All we're doing is adding the like terms. I see 7 minus 4 is 3. 3i plus 5i is plus 8i. Fifteen, multiplying. We can multiply six times negative five and get negative thirty. We have negative thirty i. The thing to remember here that gets tricky is if you ever have i times i, that equals i squared. And one of the things you're going to need to know is i squared is equal to negative one. All right, so that's something that's going to be kind of important. i squared equals negative one. Remember that. Number seventeen. We're going to distribute. Some people might call that FOIL. I like to think of it as distributive property. Distribute the 1, you'd have 3 minus 3i. Then distribute the minus 6i, and we have negative 18i plus 18i squared. Now, that i squared, it doesn't look like it has a like term, but remember what I just told you. i squared is equal to negative 1. Every time you see i squared, you're going to say that's negative 1. I didn't mean to make that look like an exponent. That's going to be a, a negative 1 there. So really what we have, 18 times negative 1, that's going to be minus 18. So I'm looking at 3 minus 3i minus 18i minus 18. Let's combine our like terms. I see 3 minus 18 is negative 15. And negative 3i minus 18i is minus 21i. Nineteen. We're still trying to simplify. Directions say simplify somewhere. Simplify. And what's not simplified about these problems is you can't have an I on the bottom. We're not allowed to end with an I on the bottom. So we're going to take care of it like, um, like this. We're going to multiply here by i over i. We're trying to take advantage of the fact that i squared equals negative 1. So we're basically just multiplying by a really special form of 1. We're not changing the value of the fraction at all. We're multiplying by 1. But this special form, i over i, is going to give me i squared on the bottom. So notice what we have. Look at the top. I'm going to call that negative 9 times i. I've got negative 9i. On the bottom, I've got 3i times i. That's 3i squared. i squared is negative 1 every time. And so I'm looking at negative 9i over 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. We can do that division. Negative 9 divided by negative 3 is just 3. So we're left with 3i. Twenty-one, probably the hardest problem because you have to do a special trick. You can't just multiply by i over i because that would just distribute and your i would just go over to the, to the 7. You're still going to have an i on the bottom. So you've got to do a really special trick here. Whatever this says, you're going to multiply by the conjugate. And so all I mean is we're going to multiply by a fraction just like we did before, but it's going to be a lot more complicated. Just take negative 7 minus i. Whatever the second number is, 
If this says plus, this says minus. If this said minus, this said plus. Okay, so notice the first one is the same, negative 7, negative 7. But the second one, this says plus, this says minus. All right, but we've got to multiply by a special form of 1, which means we do the same thing on the top and the bottom. That equals 1. We're multiplying times 1. We're not changing the value of the fraction at all. So when we multiply the top, we're going to distribute 2i times negative 7 is negative 14i, and 2i times negative i is negative 2i squared. On the bottom, is a little bit more complicated because we've got a binomial times a binomial. So we would, we would FOIL, we would double distribute. So if I distribute my negative 7, I'm going to get 49 plus 7i. And then I distribute my i, I get minus 7i minus i squared. Do not cancel those i squareds. You can't cancel something if it's being added or subtracted. So don't cancel that. What you can cancel, though, are these two like terms. The 7i and minus 7i will knock each other out, and that's going to happen every single time. What we can also do is use that fact that i squared is negative 1 in both of those positions. I'm going to clean up. On the top, I've got negative 14i, and then minus 2 times negative 1 is plus 2. On the bottom, I've got 49, and minus, minus 1. That's going to be plus 1. Or you can think of it as, let's think of it as negative 1 times negative 1. That's going to be plus 1. Okay. So uh, nothing to do on the top, but on the bottom, that's 50. So normally what they'll do is they'll, uh, I like to write it like this, negative 14i plus 2 over 50. But sometimes the book splits it into two fractions and says negative 14i over 50 plus 2 over 50. And then they'll reduce the fractions. You can divide both of those numbers by 2. You can divide both of those numbers by 2. And we see negative 7 over 25i plus 1 over 25. Ugly. That's a tough one, I know. Next, solve each equation by taking square roots. We're solving, so that means we're finding what number makes a true statement. This only has one variable, so really all we need to do is ISO the variable. Let's isolate the variable. I'm going to add 1, and then I'm going to divide by 2. And then I have to take the square root on both sides. In order to get in by itself, I take the square root on both sides. But the trick is, it's really plus or minus. You're going to have two answers. The positive square root would give me positive 10. The negative square root would give me negative 10. 25 is basically the same thing. We're going to subtract 3. We're trying to isolate the variable. Anytime you only have one variable, you should be able to isolate Subtract 3 and get negative 30. Divide by 6 and get negative 5. Square root both sides, plus or minus, don't forget. So we have plus or minus square root of negative 5. Now there's that negative again. Remember that negative is just going to be an i for imaginary. We can't really do the square root of 5. We can't simplify the square root of 5. So we're just going to say m equals square root of 5 i and negative square root of 5 i. Sometimes people think it's less confusing to write the i first. So if you want to write it like that, be my guest. Either way would be fine, as long as you understand that that i is not inside the square root. 